Hello ladies and gentlemen welcome to Triple N Media I am Dr Nick Nickam the feature presentation is heat exhaustion versus heat stroke and what is heat cramp and this is uh, end of april and beginning and beginning of may but it may be better to learn about heat cramps heat exhaustion and heat stroke before we get into the regular summer season as you know i i am from houston texas uh, which is uh, popularly known as the humbug city which stands for humidity and bugs so if you are talking about heat and humidity houston is the capital of those two characteristics which makes it extremely challenging in real high temperatures like 95 degrees or 100 degrees uh, when people can get heat cramps heat exhaustion or heat stroke in, in a matter of just a couple of hours being outdoors so let us explore what happens to the human body from a medical perspective as i'm a cardiologist and what kind of symptoms do we get and how do we really treat an extreme case of a heat exhaustion or heat stroke and most importantly i'm going to come finish by giving you some tips on how to prevent from getting into these complications so please stay tuned till the end of this presentation and please do subscribe to our youtube channel so let us begin with the feature presentation ladies and gentlemen as the summer arrives and since we don't have any more covid uh, lockdowns we never know people are working in hot weather like construction workers or people who are working on all these high buildings people are running to the beaches or people kids are playing a soccer or baseball or cricket whatever they like in the field or you may be going on a picnic or a hike and sports and jogging all of these conditions are going to expose you to direct sun light heat humidity and all the problems that go along with that so let us explore and see what are the things we expect to see whenever we are exposed to extreme degrees of temperature along with humidity humidity is the worst part because the humidity prevents your body from dissipating the heat i'll talk about that in a minute so because the body tries to compensate by increasing the circulation to the skin to get rid of the heat it produces a lot of uh, sweating in a hu hot humid condition the body temperature rises because we are exposed directly to the heat it increases sweating as i said the sweating is a means of body's uh, like a thermostat trying to cool the body system by exposing increasing the circulation dissipating the heat and in the process losing electrolytes water which leads to dehydration and that leads to low blood pressure that low blood pressure can reduce your urine output your mental condition and it can make you really weak dizzy and sometimes you can pass out so these are some of the basic medical concepts from a cardiologist perspective as what is happening internally in your body as you are going through extremes of heat along with humidity so let's talk about the three different stages of heat related complications that we might expect to see if we are in an outdoor setting in a very humid hot place the first one is the heat cramps the second mid mid range is the heat exhaustion the third one heat stroke is just like heart attack or a stroke is a medical emergency we'll look at each one of these and see how we can identify the symptoms how we can treat this uh, or prevent this from happening to start with let's talk about heat cramps heat cramps can occur in a variety of situations it could be you're just jogging on the beach or walking you can get heat cramps occasionally i 
get heat cramps between the toe muscles, between the foot muscles. I don't know how the hell these little small muscles in the foot can give cramps and it's so hard to walk. So you never know when you're going to get the cramps. It could, it, and we have seen this on the sports field, baseball, basketball, cricket, where people just running and all of a sudden they collapse uh, and they're having cre sc muscle cramps and they're scre screeching, Ooh, I can't handle it. You've seen that one. Same thing happens in a swimming pool. People, when they are swimming, can get muscle cramps. Or it could happen at night times. Older people having muscle cramps all the time. Why is it happening? As I explained to you before, it's related to dehydration. It is related to electrolyte imbalances. In, in medical patients, the electrolyte imbalances may be related to medications you're taking, like water pills, which can deplete your potassium. Along with potassium, you can be also low on magnesium. So low potassium, low magnesium, low sodium, all of this can lead to muscle cramps. Oh, why you can't handle this? And when you get muscle cramps, as you can see, he's extending that muscle to kind of release the spasm in the muscle. So when we are having these muscle cramps, these are the things that are happening within your body. And that's the thing that you really have to focus upon. So how do we treat these muscle cramps? First of all, as I said, it is related mostly to electrolyte imbalance. So you want to, first of all, get rid of the acute muscle spasm by massaging the muscle and stretching the muscle. Like if you have a cramp in this part of the arm, then you just stretch this. And same thing you do with your ankles or any other place. But uh, I was one time having cramps between the toe muscles. I don't know how you can, I tried to stretch my toes, but it was not fun. And it usually lasts for like 15, 20 minutes and it went away, luckily. <laughs> and if you get muscle cramps, stretch the muscle. Make sure you wear loose, light colors clothes. Don't wear dark black or jet blue colored dress on a hot sunny day and always cover your skin with skin tan lotion and drink plenty of fluids. And when I talk about plenty of fluids, I'm going to emphasize this towards the end of this presentation and give you a very important tip. That is, you need to drink proper fluids. Just water is not going to do it, especially if you're extremely sweating and you're losing a lot of sodium and electrolytes in your sweat. Stretching is good and staying in cool areas. If you are in a picnic, make sure you are mostly under the shade and wear loose light color clothes which reflect heat and light and drink plenty of fluids. Let's look at uh, heat exhaustion, which is a more advanced form of heat related complications and which happens, it could be indoors if you are in a like a big place where there's a lot of heat, fire going on, furnace, and there's not much air circulation, the fan has broken, the air condition has broken. It can happen inside your house without any other issues. And it happens all the time on the hottest day in Houston when your air condition breaks down or the fan breaks down or the electricity goes off and you're stuck like a pig there sweating with no relief in sight. So what do you do? We need to understand heat exhaustion, heavy sweating. You have cold, pale, clammy skin. You have a fast heart rate because, because you're sweating, you're losing volume, blood volume. When the blood volume shrinks, the heart has to pump harder to keep up the circulation. Even then it cannot because of your low volume, you develop low blood pressure. Then you get nausea, vomiting, muscle cramps. You feel tired, you're exhausted. You, you just feel like, you know, ready to just hit the floor. And because of the low blood pressure and uh, muscle cramps, you can get severe head pain, headache, neck pain. And occasionally people can pass out if the blood pressure is too low. So these are some of the more advanced symptoms of heat exhaustion and it can happen in a setting like a beach. If you are 
on a hot sun without suntan and on top of that you're drinking beer 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 you're getting dehydrated you're exhausted and that can put you into a heat exhaustion so how do we prevent this basically understand that heat exhaustion is just one step away from heat stroke which is a medical emergency so you need to keep yourself in a cool place wear light color clothes make sure that your head is protected with a white cap i know today i am wearing a air force uh, today i am wearing a air force uh, cap actually i got this air force cap when i was working at the va hospital i just went to the the gift shop there and i said oh man this kind of looks cool even though i'm not a pilot actually i have flown microsoft flight simulation but i i just love this cap because it is cool but it, this is not the best cap for a hot day then remove any tight dresses you have you know use a fan to cool the skin or use cooling like blankets or water or immerse yourself in, in a bucket of cold water and avoid alcohol that's the most important thing because when you drink alcohol and you're not drinking water guess what alcohol is like a diuretic it's like a water pill when you drink alcohol you're going to go on pee you're not replace your electrolytes you're not replace your fluid and that's going to drop your blood blood pressure and cause all these symptoms drinking water or preferably Gatorade or any kind of sports drinks that has sodium potassium in that that will re re replace the sodium and potassium you are losing when you are profusely sweating you know you, when the basketball players or a football players work vigorously for 40 50 minutes they could lose almost 5 to 10 pounds of sweat and imagine trying to replace that with plain water that's going to make you more sick so that's why they drink uh, electrolyte balanced electrolyte liquids sports drinks gatorade are the best way to replace this one we we sell that to people who are having dehydration from like like diarrhea or loose motions because we don't want them to just drink plain water that's going to make things worse and best thing is keep the legs elevated when you keep the legs elevated all the blood from the legs which is a fair amount of blood almost 20 30% of the heart circulation volume the blood returns to the heart and it helps to improve the blood pressure improve the heart function and improve mental confusion and all these things and definitely cooling blankets would be useful in these situations now let's look at heat stroke heat stroke is like your whole body is on fire you feel like you are just in hot you just you can't sweat you, your blood pressure is low you feeling weak you feel dizzy you you just kind of collapse on the floor and your face is pale your blood pressure is low and you, you could have mental confusion some people can have seizures some people even pass out but this is not a ordinary situation don't think uh, you know giving them a bottle of water and taking the person home may be the safest thing no you need to really address this as a medical emergency because heat stroke is a medical emergency it causes mental confusion because of reduced blood circulation to the brain the skin gets hot and sometimes it's cold and clammy if you have been sweating outside like playing sports and because of so much heat and humidity your body may not be able to produce sweat also and the skin may feel cold you're losing a lot of sodium potassium your body temperature can go up to 104 degrees or greater so it is like hyperthermia kind of situation then of course if the, as you lose more fluids as your body temperature goes up uh, you can develop uh, brain edema or swelling that can lead to seizures delirium or coma your pulse rate will be high your blood pressure will be low as i said this is not something that should be taken lightly and especially if you are an instructor or if you are the captain of a picnic you need to understand more importantly than the kids 
because it is in your hands to save this person's life if one person is in a heat stroke all right so what are some of the main things that we need to be focusing on a person with a heat stroke now we know what are the kinds of symptoms that will signal you may be dealing with a person with a heat stroke of course hydration ventilation remove the clothes remove all the sports dressings and fan this person get some cold towels and try to cool down the temperature in the body call 000 number there's a special number for heat stroke 000 and i'll show it to you in the next slide get to the medical facility as quickly as possible and uh, and here's the first aid every team coach or a leader should have a heat stroke first aid chart something like this that is you remove the person from exposure to heat bring them to a cool shade like a under a tree a shaded place or inside a open air building and keep the place cool use wet towels or water to cool the body temperature down get them fluids balanced electrolyte fluids i keep em emphasizing this because when you go for a picnic you know what they bring plain water that plain water is not good especially if you are in hot open air with no trees or shades or anything like that and you are sitting there drinking water bottle after bottle and then you're going to get headache and you're going to feel weak you're going to feel uh, exhausted because you are not replacing the potassium sodium and other electrolytes keep the place cool call 000000 if the person is conscious get them some balanced electrolyte fluid if the person is unstable the blood pressure is low and the respirations are shallow call the ambulance get them to the hospital and in the hospital situation you know they are going to be treated with the cold blankets of course they have cooling blankets in the hospital which can really bring the temperature down in a uniform fashion in a very quick period of time you can sprinkle some cold water put some cold towels around the face and forehead and get an iv started and we need to pump like 1 to 2 liters of balanced sodium like normal saline or uh, ringer's lactate to bring the volume of the blood to bring the blood volume up and increase the blood circulation and improve the mental <laughs> status and as i said this is a medical medical emergency getting that person to the right place where they can get appropriate medical help could save that person's life so if you are a teacher a team leader or a coach you need to understand the difference between heat cramps and heat exhaustion and heat stroke ladies and gentlemen i hope this has been educational to you and i told you i was going to talk to you about electrolytes replacing water with water all the sweat that you are ha having especially if your kid is on the field playing football has been sweating like a pig then water is not the ideal solution the ideal solution is i just put gatorade here but it could be any kind of sports but i i want to get you a focus on here look at this it has sodium it has potassium and it has some carbohydrates but more importantly we are interested in in sodium and potassium so it gives a balanced fluid because if you just drink water when you're dehydrated and when your sodium is low it's going to cause imbalance between the composition of the blood and the tissues as a result it's going to cause more complications than you would have if you were to use a balanced liquid to replace the lost to sodium in your intravascular system so ladies and gentlemen yeah, here are some different kinds of drinks you can just pause this one and look at the sodium and potassium content of the different kinds of uh, drinks available here you can you can make a decision as and make sure you have this maybe everybody doesn't need it but if one person is having symptoms of heat exhaustion or heat stroke that person needs to be 
on this particular uh, uh, drink. And here are some tips on prevention. I said I was going to tell you about prevention. I think prevention is the best treatment for heat-related complications like cramps, exhaustion, or heat stroke. As I said, I equate heat stroke to like a brain stroke or a heart attack. It is an emergency. Okay, avoid alcohol. I mean, it's easier said than done. If you're with your buddies on the beach, you know what you're doing, but you need to be also cognizant of the fact that uh, you could end up in the emergency room with a heat stroke. Wear light color clothes. Dark color clothes absorb heat. A black absorbs the entire heat coming from the sun. So be selective and make sure you wear a cap, all right? And monitor the outdoor temperature. Make sure you wear protective gear like a white cap and sunglasses and have a sunscreen applied all over your body especially if you're going to the beach with your bikinis and you're trying to get your skin. I was there out to like just about a month ago actually in an outdoor setting uh, function. There were no trees, anything like that. The temperature was like 95 degrees plus. The problem in Houston is humidity. It's not the temperature. I know if it's dry 95 degrees, that's different from 95 degrees with Humidity is 70%, something like that, or 80%. I was sweating like a pig, and I was just getting exhausted. I just left after a couple of hours. But we need to take some of these precautions. It says drink water, and I would say carry a couple of bottles of balanced electrolyte liquid drink. And always keep yourself cool. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching this presentation. Before I go, I want to conclude on an important thing that mothers should be aware of, and that is either leaving your pets or kids in a car with closed doors when the temperature outside is 95 to 100 degrees. We have heard stories of pets or kids dying because of heat exhaustion and heat stroke. Just keep that in mind. If you are just going for a shopping, you know, you could roll the windows down a little bit so there is air circulation. That's one of the options. The best option is to take the kid with you where you go because the car is not the place to leave your young kid with glass with windows rolled up when the temperature outside is 95 to 100 degrees. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching this presentation. I know this is a long presentation, but this is something which is highly useful, especially for coaches, for instructors, for team leaders who are taking young children or high school students on an outdoor activity where heavy exercise is involved in open air fields with practically no shade. Thank you so much and please do subscribe to my YouTube channel and I will see you in the next presentation.